Next year, 13 released a bunch of new features and one of them is the font optimization, including built-in automatic self-hosting of your font in your Next.js server and zero layout shift when your font will load. Hi everyone, I am Nico from Sunsell, a headless CMS based on Next.js with a visual page builder. And in today's video, we're gonna see how to implement the new Next.js uh, font optimization and the benefit using it compared to the traditional way to use a font in a Next.js project. So, Let's dig in. So I already bootstrapped the Next.js project with the Create Next.js app. So it's a standard Next.js 13 application. We can do a npm run dev. And if we go inside the localhost 3000, we will have our application running. By default, the font display will be the system font. In my case, I am on Mac, so it will be the Apple system font. And depending of your device or the browser you used, you will not have the same uh, font displayed. And of course, we want to have the same result no matter the device we use. And you may also want to have a specific font for the branding of your website. So to do this, we may go to the uh, Google Fonts website. They have more than a thousand of uh, fonts. And in this video, we will use the Pacifico font because it's super easy to recognize. So to implement a font in your project, you can put this font inside the head of uh, your HTML. So we will copy the link and we'll go inside our page and inside our head, we will copy this. So now we have our font, it's still not working. So we need to uh, also say that the font that we're gonna use in, inside our project will be the Pacifico. If I saved, the Pacifico font will be displayed in my project. So the way it works is that the default system font will be displayed first and after your custom font will be fetched using the Google font API. And once this custom font is downloaded, it will replace the uh, default system font. Depending of your internet speed, it can be quite noticeable. So to demonstrate this, we will simulate a slow internet. Inside the network, we will say slow 3G. And now we will refresh. As you can see, it can be quite noticeable. In this case, the font took 2.48 seconds uh, to load. It takes that much time also because we need to fetch the font uh, from the Google API. One of the way to do is to directly download the font in your project. So you will not need to fetch it and the loading time will be faster. So let's do this. Inside our public folder, we'll create a fonts folder. And inside this one, we will put our specific fonts that we are downloaded from the Google font website. Now we can remove uh, the link from the head because we will not need anymore. And inside our globals.css, we will import the fonts that we have in local. So as you can see, it's working fine, but there is still a major issue. Even if it loads faster, you will still have a layout shift. So what is a layout shift? The amount of space used by the default system font and your custom font will be different, causing a layout shift and a bad user experience. And this is especially what Next.js font is made for. It will automatically host use a font in your Next.js server, making it very really fast to load. And by uh, adjusting the size of the font related to the system font, it will prevent the layout shift. So now let's see how to implement Next.js font. Let's delete this and this because we will not use anymore. Next.js font is by default not inside the base Next.js code, so we need to import it. So let's do npm i next font. We will go inside our underscore app.txt6 and we will import our Pacifico font. The Pacifico font is inside the Google fonts, so we will use slash Google and you will have access to all the fonts from Google. Now that your font is important, we need to define a new instance of uh, your font. And in this specific function, you will be able to access to all the font uh, properties that you will uh, normally access uh, in the HTML. And uh, depending of the font you use, for example, if you use a variable font, which is recommended because it's more optimized and it will improve even more your performance, you will not need, uh, for example, to put a weight. So uh, let's continue with the Pacifico. So now we need to wrap our project inside our Pacifico class name. So let's do this. Let's define like a wrapper and inside we will give Pacifico dot, dot class name. And it's working directly. So it's super easy to implement. 
because Next.js actually will rename uh, the name of the font. You will not be able to use uh, this font directly inside a module.css. So uh, let's say, for example, I only want uh, my title to be with the Pacifico font. I will define a variable which will create a CSS variable. So let's call it font.pacifico. And here we will give pacifico.variable. So I don't have the font anymore. And now we can use this one. If we go inside our module.css and inside the title, we will be able to define font family. So like this, we, we give like the CSS variable of the font and my title become a font pacifico. But because we have defined the pacifico variable here, it will not be able to use the font directly inside the body tag when I say you see that uh, the other element are not a pacifico. Because if we check the HTML, the body tag is over this div where we have defined uh, the variable. So uh, body do not have access to this uh, CSS variable. Last thing, if you want to use uh, this font inside your Tailwind, you will need to also define the, the variable and inside uh, your Tailwind config, you will extend the font family with Pacifico and give it uh, the CSS variable that you have defined. So after, if we transform this into a string template, and after we use the font Pacifico that we have extended in our Tailwind config, if I save, everything becomes Pacifico. If you want to use a local font, it will be almost the same. Uh, the difference is, uh, so let's comment this. And instead of using the Google font, we will import local font from next font local. After you need to define an instance of your local font. And basically uh, the difference uh, will be so if I use, so the difference is that here we need to uh, define the source where is located our uh, fonts, and it will be working the same. So now let's see how perform each method, meaning the traditional way that we saw uh, at the beginning and the Next.js font. I have cleaned up the project and re-implemented the method where I put the font inside the head using the link. I deploy it online. So our page is now online and if I do a page speed, we can see that of course we have a good score because it's like the base Next.js app without uh, nothing inside. But we can still see that we have lost some points. But it took a bit of time and it's maybe due to the fetching of the font. Also we can see that uh, we have some layout shift. Because the page uh, do not have a lot of content, of course, it's not a big issue right now. But if your page have much more components and elements inside, it can make you drop a lot of points for this. So now let's check with our second method, which is uh, downloading manually the font inside our project and using it instead of fetching it by the Google API. So I already have deployed uh, online the uh, website. And if I check the page speed, we can see that the uh, score improved the first content paint uh, time decreased. So this is maybe due because the loading will be faster, but we still have a layout shift. And now if we use the next font, let's see how it performed already push deployed online. We can see that the score is now of 100. So it's loading super fast and we do not have the layout shift anymore. And that's all for the Next.js font optimization. As we saw together, it was super easy to use and to implement. It will reduce the page loading and remove your layout shift. In my case, I think it's also improving the development flow because the way to handle font in a Next.js project will be the same all the time. Of course, because Sensel is based on Next.js, you can already use this font optimization inside your Sensel project. If you have any question on Next.js or Sensel, please let a comment below. You can also contact us in our Discord. Hope you have enjoyed the video and see you in the next one. Bye bye.